So you have officially done all of the research, all of the planning, and all of the groundwork for creating your dream business. The only thing left to do now is set up your systems and officially launch. I can't believe it has been already a week, you guys. If you are new here, I have done a seven day challenge. I'm calling seven days to build that business. And I showed up here for seven days with very specific sales and marketing actionable steps for you that you can take to kickstart your first business. I'm here to empower and encourage you to take control of your future. I feel really passionate about helping people try to experiment, step out of the comforts of that normal mundane nine to five lifestyle that has been ingrained in us all of our lives. Whether or not this succeeds is on you. And so today we're going to be talking all about the systems, all of the free tools and resources that you should be using every day to make sure that this business takes off. I understand we are new to business. We don't have a lot of income coming in quite yet. That's gonna change soon, I promise. But right now, everything I'm showing you is gonna be free just to make it really, really easy and eliminate that barrier to entry. Today, I'm gonna walk you through, we're gonna talk about day-to-day -day project management. We're gonna talk about managing your sales leads. We're gonna talk about content creation, finances, daily communication, all of that fun stuff. So. Let's dive into today's video. So first things first, I wanna start with the core business systems. These are the things that you're gonna be using every single day, okay? And specifically, I'm focusing on two that are really important, your project management software and your CRM, your customer relationship management software. These can get very, very, very expensive, but they, they make up the bulk of what runs your business. So let's be honest and say like, it's worth having. The first one I'm gonna recommend that I really love is Asana for project management. They have a paid version and there are several, several project management tools out there. But I find that Asana is very straightforward, very simple to use. And I'm gonna be using Asana in my business to manage the client projects that I'm gonna have. Okay, so this is where you can think of having a board and you can have different categories like your not started list all the way to your done list. And you can kind of move, you know, tasks that you have on your plate into different stages. And this is a really good way to set up a huge project. The cool thing is, is even on the free version, you can set up multiple workspaces. And on the multiple workspaces, you can have one that's for, you know, your internal business marketing, maybe one that's for each client's marketing or whatever your situation is, but it's a good way to stay on track. And if you hire freelancers or you have different employees, you can all work in there together. So that's really cool. And you can do quite a lot for the free version. The second one is your CRM. So if you've ever heard of something like Salesforce before, very, very big company, um, they are very expensive. So I don't recommend you doing that starting out. But one that I recommend that has quite a lot of features is HubSpot. HubSpot caters to more of that small to medium sized business, which I love. They have got so many different products and features. They've got a sales focused one. They've got a, a marketing focused one. They've got all these and you can connect them all if you pay for it, but each one you'd have to pay, I think separately. But the sales CRM in HubSpot works great because what you could do is have all of your leads in there. You can have their name, their phone number, their email address. You can leave, you know, detailed notes about how you met them. When was the last time you talked to them, all of that. And you can manage every time you've touched base with them. We call these touch points in sales. So every time that you communicate with that lead, you would leave a note detailing that and it will track last activity and all of that stuff so that you can have a really good flow of consistent traffic as you're going through your pipeline. And I can make another video on sales pipeline if you are interested in seeing kind of that process of how we bring a lead into the opportunity pipeline, how we pull, push them through all the way to the final sale. All of that can be done within HubSpot for free. There's not a huge learning curve the way something like a Salesforce or a Zoho or a Pipedrive. There are so many platforms forms for this, but I highly recommend HubSpot. Now, a lot of people use something called Notion. 
I don't recommend it for that, but I do love Notion and I'm in it every single day. I think it's great for having a database of all of your company resources, kind of like a wiki page. And in here, you would keep everything you need from like SOPs, standard operating procedures. You would keep in there all of your branding information. You can even use it just as like a plain notebook and you can jot down ideas and you know, whatever it is, you can do product development ideas in Notion. So I love that as like my own tool. You can obviously, yes, you can bring in other people into Notion to work with you. I don't love it for that. Um, but again, a lot of people use Notion for project management. They use it for CRMs. They use it for a lot of different parts of the business. Imagine working with someone, hiring a freelancer or bringing someone you know, internally to work with you and you need them to know how your brand's tone and voice and feel and identity, all of that stuff. That's a a really good thing to put in your Notion dashboard so that someone new coming in can see that, learn from it, and kind of get a sense of who you guys are as a company and the company culture and all of that could live in um, Notion. The next thing I wanna talk about is communication. So whether this is client communication, team communication, a couple different things I recommend for free are Slack. It's kind of like a messaging service. You just ping each other back and forth. Um, the other one is Google Meets. This is kind of a replacement for Zoom so that you can have all of these meetings if you do need to have strategy calls or any anything with clients, this would be a really great tool to use. Regarding finances, I'm gonna keep this real short, but for finances, I always used to use QuickBooks. I used it more from like the self-employed aspect. It was very simple. When I got into more of the accounting side of things, it was a little overwhelming <laughs> and there's a lot going on. So I would recommend Wave. I haven't tried it yet for myself, but that's what I'm gonna start off with this time around. And I've heard nothing but good things, and I have looked at Reddit and other places to see what people are saying about the product in comparison to QuickBooks. QuickBooks is a lot more expensive, and in Wave, it seems like just from the visuals that I've seen in the demo, that it's really straightforward and simple to use, and it's literally geared towards small businesses. So that could be a great option for you. Um, and if you do use any of these, just let me know in the comments below because I would love to know what your personal review is, but also if you think other brands or other softwares are better. The next part is content creation. There's a lot of platforms out there for this. Um, the main ones that I use are Canva. That's what I use for all of my graphics, even to make these videos, the thumbnail, to make all of the little pop-ups that come up on the screen that you'll see. They are about like 15 or $20 a month, but they've got a ton. They've got this whiteboard feature, they've got AI, they've got it all, okay? So I do recommend using Canva. The other one would be some kind of scheduler, like a buffer or later. These are really good platforms where you can just post your content and schedule for a later time to get pushed out so that you don't have to like manually go through it. Like I like the features where you can visualize what your home page looks like, but I do think there's something to be said about manually posting your post because there's a lot of engagement that can happen from that. Like if you're posting at some random time like noon and you're not even next to your phone, to me, I haven't seen that much traffic on those posts the way I see it when I'm on the app, engaging, messaging, commenting to other people. I also recommend a scheduler if you have to get calls scheduled like I would have to in my line of work. Calendly is a really good one for a free version. I don't, I've tried to look around for some other ones and they're extremely expensive. Like Acuity is connected to my Squarespace website, which my Squarespace website was very easy to set up, but everything is kind of expensive. I'm not gonna pay like $30 a month for a calendar scheduler. I highly recommend Calendly for a lot of those like just quick links that you put into things so that people can book a time on your calendar. It syncs with my Google workspace. So it's perfect. A few other things that I recommend using from the very, very beginning. You may think it doesn't matter, but I do think it's important to have these set up in place. Like I said, I use Squarespace. I do recommend connecting a Google Analytics account early on, just so that you can have all that data from the very beginning and see how much traffic you're getting, where it's coming from. Analytics can be kind of 
of hard to like understand because there's a ton of information in there, but you'll get better at it. You'll hire someone. You will be involved in that process. You'll see it. You'll, you can learn from Google Analytics. With these free tools, you should be off to the races. We have covered everything from figuring out the kind of business that really means something that you are passionate about, creating a brand identity, creating a lead generation funnel so that you can actually get leads and start closing, looking at a customer journey map so that you can speak directly to customers pain points and creating a 90 day content marketing plan. We covered everything here. So if there's anything specifically that you would like more information on, I am so excited to create more content about this stuff and I really hope that it helps you and maybe I said things a little bit differently and offered a new perspective for you that you may not have thought about otherwise. If you haven't done so already, please download the checklist down below. This is a basically a bullet point list summary of everything that we've covered to make sure that you're not forgetting anything as you go through the process for yourself. Also, go ahead and check out the other videos that I have, day one through six. There is a lot there. I am planning on creating another video within the next week. I want to give these videos some time to settle on the YouTube channel. And then I want to look at my analytics and kind of figure out what's been happening. There's a couple interesting things that I've noticed throughout these last seven days that I'm very excited to share with you. And maybe this helps you for your own YouTube channel. So yeah, I'm going to share with you some of the tips and lessons that I've learned of how the algorithm is reacting to my seven posts in a week. So stick around for that video. It will be coming next week. I'm really excited to share that information with you guys. Thank you so much for sticking around for this seven day challenge. And I cannot wait to continue this journey with you guys. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks so much.